If you are new to automations, this video is perfect for you. I will show you how automations can save your business time so you instead can focus on growing it. Okay, so first of all, what are automations? It's basically using computer software to do a task that we would have done manually if otherwise. And what is the cool thing here? That software is much cheaper than labor and makes fewer mistakes. So it is a no brainer for businesses. In fact, I would even say that it's required for businesses to use automation whenever possible. For example, with the automations that I have in my business, I am easily saving a person's salary and it's costing me around 30 bucks per month. So what can we automate? Basically anything that is repeated over time. One example could be getting inquiry requests from a form directly to our CRM. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and I'm gonna share more examples at the end of this video. Let's stay with the basics. So let's first see which apps are going to allow us to automate processes. The first one and probably the most famous is Zapier. It is a super robust tool, but the con is that it's quite expensive and that it doesn't work very well with Notion, which is the app that I use for everything in my life. The second tool that I would recommend is make.com. It is very well priced, it is super powerful, but the con is that it's a little bit harder to use versus Zapier, but the integration with Notion works wonderfully and there is so many more things that we can do in make.com versus what we can do in Zapier. So this will be my recommendation if you are going to automate processes where Notion plays a part. There are hundreds of automation tools, but if we are to keep things simple, I will just stick to these two. By the way, if you like content around making your business more productive, please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up. Okay, so how do these automation tools work? All automation tools have something in common. They need a trigger to start any of the automations that we have programmed. And there are typically two kinds of triggers. One that is an app-based trigger. So this means that some event happens in some of our apps that trigger the automation and start the whole process. And second is a frequency-based trigger. So this means we are gonna run this automation periodically every X number of days at Y time. So we can start to understand what I mean by all of this. Let's start building one of the easiest automations, which is to bring information from a Google form into Notion, okay? So here I am in, in Make, I created a new scenario. And what I'm gonna do here is to build what is the trigger, what is going to be the trigger of this automation. Here I'm, pr I'm prompted to select which tool I'm going to be using. And in this case is Google Forms. And we have over here the option to watch responses, triggers when a new response is received. So this means whenever I receive a response from the Google form that I'm gonna create now, this automation is going to trigger. Now, what we need to do is to connect Make to our Google account. This is also common for every automation tool. We need to allow Make, in this case, to connect to whatever other tool or service that we are using. So for this, I'm gonna click on add and sign it with Google. Just follow the steps and that is it. Now I'm gonna go create the form and come back to me. That is it, I finished creating the form. So now we are gonna search for it. Here we have the form. And that is it, the trigger is now built. Now I'm going to build the next step of the automation to show you another thing that is very common within automation tools, which is mapping parameters. So we have this form and we wanna bring the information to Notion in our case. We want to create a database item because the result from the form we wanna bring into a database that we are gonna create in Notion. So we click in create. So now we need to add the connection to our Notion workspace. We select Notion Public. And now we have to make sure that the workspace that we wanna connect to make is selected over here. Then we go to select pages. What does this mean? In this dialog, we are selecting which pages and databases make is going to have access to. So in my case, I just have this one because this is a workspace that I just created. So I'm gonna select this one and allow access. And that is it, the connection has been finished, but there is something, I mean, in my workspace, it was pretty easy because I just had one thing. But if your workspace is more full and or if you wanna give access to make for other databases in the future, you can go directly to Notion, open the database itself and go over here to these three dots. 
and then here are your connections so if make is not here you will have to go to add connections search for make and add make to this database okay and like this is how you are going to be able to manage these database so these are the two ways that we can give access to some databases within make which also applies to every other automation tool that connects to Notion. So now here I'm going to search the database that I want to bring the data into. We just search by the name. So my database is called form entries. So just with form is going to be enough. That is it. And here I have the two fields that I have in my database over here. So now remember what I told you before, how to map attributes. When I click over here, I have all the output that this Google form is going to give me. I mean, the connection with Google Forms is very good because from the very beginning, I already have the answers over here, how the answers are formatted. We have name and we have email, but this is not always true. So what we typically have to do is to first run this step of the automation so Make can understand how the data is formatted from this app. And then we can map the information over here. With mapping information, I mean, I want that the answer name goes to my name property. So how do we do this? We right click over here, run this module only. And as you can see, nothing really happens. But in this way, I haven't filled the form with any test data. So what we need to do is go to the form and fill it. That's it. So now we go back here and run this module only. And here we have it. By the way, if you run an automation and it's not catching the data that you just sent, the test data, you will have to right click and select where you are going to start this automation from, like which point in time. So you will have to click here and select all, okay, if you are doing a test. So like this, uh, Make is going to, to understand uh, when the data was created and it's going to capture it. So that is it. We will go over here and let's map the contents from the form to this notion set let's open the name and then the answer and the value that is over here you see before we could just see name so if we would have used only name we would have received like this raw text 77599 and this is not what we want so it was good that we did this test so we can get to have all this data structure and the same with the email open answers and value and that is it. So now let's run this automation. And for running this automation, we need to turn it on over here. So like this, now this is waiting for some event to happen. So let's fill this form again and let's send it. Now let's go to make and let's wait for the execution to start. And the automation run. And here I have my data. In the case of this automation, this trigger is not a database trigger is the second type is a frequency based trigger so we can see here that this is now triggering every one minute we can also know this by this clock icon over here this particular to make also in zapier we can do this kind of triggers but it will look a little bit different but the the mindset and the, the way it works is very is very similar so every minute this automation is gonna look at google forms to see if there has been any new entry and is going to run this automation and since we are mapping the values over here so the name comes to name and the email comes to email as so so we have seen this example with notion but we can use millions of apps like the sky is the limit there is thousands and thousands and thousands of apps so with notion it was pretty easy to give make access to it but for some other apps, we may be required to give make our API key that is called. This is basically an alphanumeric key that is going to tell make like, hey, make this is my account in this service. You can access it because if I know this key, it means that I'm the owner. So this is the second way that we may be required to give make access to some other app. By the way, whenever you are finishing with one automation, don't forget to save it and to turn it on. Now, this was one of the simplest examples on an automation, but what else can we do? So for example, we can send clients a contract whenever we change a status within Notion. 
or we can integrate our payment processor, in my case Stripe. So whenever I receive money, I send that information into my Notion, tag it to the person that has sent it to me. We can trigger an automation in the moment that our client has signed our contract and we kick off all the onboarding process. We can create a Google Drive folder for him, we can create a Slack channel, and then we can send all of this by email to our prospect, which is now a client. We can, by just checking a checkbox in our Notion, in our CRM, we will be able to trigger an automation that is going to send our customer the invoice with the data that we have in Notion. So as you can see, possibilities are endless, but the mindset and the way that these automations work is pretty similar to what I have just shown you. So what to do with this information right now? Well, my recommendation will be audit what you do on a daily basis and those things that repeat over time, I mean, things that always follow the same number of steps, go to make.com, see if the tools that you are using are integrated and try to find ways to automate it. This is the only way that you're going to learn which are the limitations of Make in this case, what can be done, what can't be done. And if you don't find a way to achieve what you want or you have doubts, just drop me a comment in this video and I will try to help you out. If you want to see more advanced examples of what is possible with automation, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video of a playlist where I have tons of examples on how I'm using this for my business. That is it for today and as always, hasta la próxima.